talking with Claudia Kuric. She's a food blogger, cookbook author, and health coach, and she's stuck in Dallas, isn't she? Hi, Claudia. Hey, Christina. Yes, I am stuck in Dallas, but it's not one of the worst places I could be stuck in. So, yeah, I'm here. Yes. So, you're Romanian and you've been living all over the world and you were supposed to be in Denmark since March and you're still stuck in Dallas. Yeah, How so I happen? Yeah, I'm Romanian. Uh, my husband is Danish and we've been living um, abroad like Dubai for eight years and then we moved to Dallas, Texas. Um, we've been living here for almost five years now and um, we were supposed to relocate to Denmark end of March. However, so we had a flight ticket, we, have, we had everything arranged, the movers, but then um, because of the closing of the borders in Europe, I couldn't, my husband could travel, but I couldn't because I'm not a Danish citizen and Danish borders were closed, even if you were a spouse of someone who is a Danish citizen. So we had to cancel everything. Yeah. We had to renew our lease here where we are staying, which was lucky because, you know, we could just go day by day and they were really um, accommodating to us. So yeah, one month and a half later, we're still here. <laughs> Yeah, but I understand that you're going to be moving next week, aren't you? Yes, finally, like, uh, exactly. I mean, borders are closed. Danish authorities have revised their um, policies regarding the partners and spouses of Danish citizens. So now we can, um, yeah, we can move. Yeah. My last days in uh, in Dallas, Texas, the U.S. This apartment, so yeah, it's kind of like you know bittersweet. Ah, oh, and I've seen on your Instagram, which by the way, it looks absolutely amazing, and it's not yeah. just because it's pictures with food, and I'm a foodie. I mean, everything on your Instagram is amazing. And I was thinking because you're living by this um, lifestyle that is called. Plant paradox, isn't it? The plant paradox, yeah. Yeah, and you're living this lifestyle. Was it difficult during this time, during, during this isolation time, to find whatever you needed in order to continue living by your lifestyle? Actually, that's a good question. Um, like, for me, things were easier than for other people mm -hmm. because I was cooking at home anyway almost all my meals. I was rarely going out to restaurants. I don't drink, so I didn't go to bars or... So basically for me, and then here the supermarkets are open and the farmer's markets are open and we can go anytime we want. We don't need special papers or anything. So we can just go and buy. Um, uh, there are some uh, rules about social distancing, but it's basically, we are kind of free to go out whenever we want and as much as we want. So and roam around. Yes. You're a health coach as well and a food blogger. I was just thinking maybe it's, it's not something that is very well known for people, the plant paradox. And I was thinking if you could tell me whatever brought you to this lifestyle and uh, what does it really mean? Okay, so it's actually, it's almost, it's been almost three years since I started. Um, it was, um, my, my birthday is in July, so it was close to my 38th birthday, I think. Yeah, 38th birthday. And then, you know, like it's that kind of late 30s when you're kind of like, you know, wondering all kind of things and like questioning all kind of things and starting your body to feel like kind of weird things. And um, I had gained um, quite a lot of weight in the past. It was kind of, um, it wasn't sudden, but like, and I was kind of ignoring it because it wasn't sudden. I was like, oh, okay, no, it's, it's not that bad. But then 
I had to buy a new pair of jeans every like six months. So at one point I went to this like size that I never, you know, and that was the only pair of jeans that would fit me. But I was still ignoring, I refused to go on the scale. So I didn't want to see the number because I knew if I see that, I'm just going to have a shock. Yeah. So, but I went to um, uh, like, um, how do you call it, a routine checkup. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you go to a checkup, the first thing they do, they put you on a scale. Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, okay, the moment of truth. So when I saw that number, which was the highest I've ever been, and that it was kind of a realization, I was like, oh, what is this? I was kind of like, you know, it was really bad for me because I'm a really small person. And like, if you have eight, nine kilograms extra, which I had, it, it just, you can see it, right? And you can feel it in your uh, clothes and everything. Anyway, so, and I asked the doctor, uh, he asked me, he said, you are healthy, whatever, but do you have any concern that you want to talk to me? But I was like, you know, I just saw like how much I weighed and I'm kind of like worried. Why did I gain so much weight? And, you know, he said, he was very nice, you know, and, and he said, um, oh, you know, like when women approach their 40s, they are supposed to have some like, you know, hormonal issues and you gain some weight and, but it's your health, you know, it's like, it's normal. I came back home and I, something I think happened in my brain. Like I was not accepting what they told me. And I, at the same time, I was kind of like angry a little bit. Like, you know, it's just, I mean, from now on, it's only like downward. Like, what is this? You know, it's kind of like, okay, I, I, don't accept this. So I think somehow, you know, when we open ourselves to receiving the answers, because I had questions before, but I was never open. I never did a diet in my life before. I was the person who say, you eat everything in moderation. You eat like, you know, healthy things. And then like a little bit of it. And I was eating really healthy. Like, that's why I was surprised. I wasn't like, you know, I was doing yoga every day and like uh, eating like, you know, this usual stuff there, like healthy stuff, colorful. And, and, and then the answer came to me one day in the form of a, an article, an interview with this doctor, Stephen Gundry, um, on Goop. You know, it just came on my Facebook feed. And I, I never, I was never open to any diet, anything. I've never done a diet before. But then this something, it was something in the headline that kind of caught my attention because it was talking about what if some healthy foods make us sick? So for me, it, it just kind of clicked, okay, what if the healthy foods I'm eating it make me sick? So I was like, okay, I read that. And it just, it was so specific to my situation. And I ordered the book. And then I got the book and then I read the book. And then once you read it, you cannot go back. Like if you're open and you just, I, I couldn't go back to the, to what I was doing before. So I just started. And since then, yeah, that was, that was August, 2017. And since then, so you lost weight, you lost the extra weight you meant. Yes. I lost the extra weight. It just melted away. It's unbelievable. Like, I kind of like, I, I couldn't even believe, you know, it, it just, uh, there is a lot of water retention, you know, sometimes it's not really like, but it's, it's more like water retention is like a few kilograms of that kind of thing that goes away. That's amazing. So um, I haven't done any research on that, but now I'm quite interested in reading that book and uh, seeing the principles in that. So basically what I know about it is, is that the inflammation goes down you lose the extra weight. You don't have, if you have any allergies, food allergies, then these go away as well. Uh, some people that experience skin problems or acne or things like that, those go away. What else was it there? I mean, loads of things, honestly. Yeah, there is. Loading, and it's very personal because we all have like, a I, the idea is that like all the symptoms we experience are not 
the are not the illness. Yeah. The root cause of this is different in each of us and we all manifested in a certain way. Mm -hmm. It can be that the root cause is the same, but mm -hmm. you will get acne and I will get sinus. Sinus. So it's like it's so different because we are all really different individuals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like a set of so but this kind of like approach of the diet approach, it kind of eliminates those, mm -hmm. those root causes, right? So it fixes those. Mm -hmm. And then each of us like will have like, you know, a, like different results depending what uh, problems mm -hmm. we have, you know. And I know that, I mean, you're supposed probably to eliminate um, the obvious bad foods like fast food, processed foods, sugar, uh, in things like so. Yeah, you're nodding. So that means, yeah. Because <laughs> um, these are comfort foods, aren't they? So unless you find any recipes beforehand, then you will really crave them and it might just get you off track. So... Was this one of the reasons that you went into developing your own recipes and uh, did, did, did your food blog come from this thing as well? Yes, it did come. I started with an Instagram because I wanted, I've always been a foodie. I loved good food, beautiful food from all over the world. Living in Dubai <laughs> for so many years, I was exposed to really all the cuisines in the world and good chefs and so I always loved that traveling was always about discovering food and so I am a foodie I'm someone who loves eating good food but I was I was never into this kind of processed uh, nasty kind of food I never liked that but I liked good food but still good food is tomato sugar wheat that stuff right so um so for me, it was, I think I reached a moment where my desire to fix my health issues was much higher than any desire to eat any particular food. Mm -hmm. So I had enough. I felt like, okay, I ate enough of all this stuff all my life. I tried everything. Now it's time to just move on and like, you know, explore something different. Yeah. So the reason I started my Instagram, which had a weird name at the beginning, it was because I am a person who likes to cook um, intuitively. Yeah. And I would always like, I make something and I love it. And by the next day, I forget what I did. Like, you know, like, and I want to make it again. I'm like, what did I make? Like, how did I make it? So I was like, okay, I'm going to keep like a food, um, their diary like you know and then a uh, journal and then i have the picture and i have put a letter like note with what i made so that's how i started and then yeah from here it just developed like yeah mm -hmm. you have a pretty strong community behind you i mean there are lots of people watching your your food blog and also they are looking at the pictures and liking them and commenting on them. Do you think your community is living by the same lifestyle you are, the plant paradox, or uh, are there also people that are using some of your recipes and living a different lifestyle? The majority of them, yes, are following this lifestyle. All right. Uh, but there are also people, because I didn't want to... I am living by this, but I also acknowledge that there is not one way for everyone to mm -hmm. heal. This is not like a, you know, what they call a fad diet, mm -hmm. you know. It is actually based on uh, uh, very specific scientific principles and um, it not only it involves the elimination of lectin um, rich foods, lectin is a protein in certain plants. Um, but also like, for example, some people start asking me like, why we eliminate sugar? Does sugar have lectins? No, sugar doesn't have lectins, but it is 
sugar is not could cannot be part of a healthy lifestyle especially if you start having some um, health issues if yeah. you're still like 18 and you're healthy you know like i mean you can still eat your cakes and but at one point that will show up yeah mm -hmm. i was just wondering claudia i mean because of this isolation um, did you come up with any creative ideas or any new projects or any plans that wouldn't have happened um, if you wouldn't have been in this situation? Um, okay, there's there's few things here. Like, firstly, like I feel like everything that happens happens for a reason, and it's like. I don't think about what would have happened if it wasn't for this. So I did this 21 day meditation. It was focused on abundance. Uh, and it's, I feel like it's so important for all of us because especially coming from Romania, we have this scarcity mindset. So, and for me, that was very strong. That was the problem I felt like I need to work on. So, and then after started, some amazing things happened. Like, I don't know, you know, like sometimes it's like, you don't know if they would have happened if it wasn't yeah. for the thing, but like you, it's the serendipity and like, you know, yeah. So things like a, fr a lost friend from like my school years and just contacted me out of nowhere. I've been looking for her forever, but I couldn't because, you know, the name changed and she's not really on social media and all that stuff. So that made me so happy. And I think that also changed something in me, like, like made me more, uh, accepting of what's happening. And then it's like, okay, good things are coming. Mm -hmm. Right, so I feel this is something maybe wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for those kind of lockdown energy and meditation stuff, and um, and plus, like I start oh, another thing, like I've been struggling with starting a gratitude journal forever. Like I had this idea, I wanted to do it. I knew it's useful, and I knew it, but I just couldn't do it. Like you know, it wasn't for. So one day I meet, keeping social distancing, I meet one of my best friends here in Dallas. We haven't seen each other in a month and we exchanged some presents. I gave her some Easter uh, Romanian painted eggs. And guess what she gives me? A gratitude journal. And uh, I go home to do my daily meditation. And the, that day topic was, Today I, and every day I remember to be grateful. I'm like, poo, my, I was like, you know, even though I have goosebumps, I'm like, and I, then so naturally started and now I'm doing this every, every day and I feel like I, I have, like, I, it's in me, like I have to do it, I want to do it. Mm -hmm. And I wonder why it kept me for so long not doing it. You. <laughs> Probably. Exactly, right? I mean, you see, like, um, yeah, there's, so that's some of the things that happen on, on this level, like more like spiritual and my creative part wasn't that thriving that much, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Not when it comes to food anyway, like maybe in other area, like the spiritual and like, I started dancing. Can you believe that? Like, I am not like, I mean, I love to dance, but like, I'm, if I don't go out, I don't go party. It's, you don't really have that much opportunity to dance, right? And you don't really dance alone in the house unless there is a lockdown. Mm -hmm. kind of. I mean, you had that, you've grown a lot during this time on a personal level because. I mean, what you've said, you did that 21 days of meditation on abundancy, and then you made some connection related to that, and you started doing your gratitude program, which, I mean, almost everybody that's successful and famous talk about, so definitely that will lead to amazing things, and you discover them things, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean... You know, it is, um, 
we just I, I feel that we have to accept. I mean, doesn't mean you agree with like, you know, I I'm a rebel, so I don't like when people tell me what to do. But you know, it doesn't mean I agree with what's happening, but I accept. And I just, whatever it's in my control, um, I just start, I just use it for mm -hmm. whatever I can to grow. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Claudia, for sharing with me things that happened to you and during this time. And I'm really, really happy that I was able to discover your Instagram, which is amazing. And I still have images popping in my head <laughs> with, with those recipes. Um, I really hope to see you soon and um, stay safe. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'll just, we'll talk once I'm in Denmark and when I come to Romania, for sure, we're going to meet. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah.